Hi, friend. Hi, how are oh, you? Hey, long time no see. I know. How are you? What? What's on your finger? Oh, I'm kind of a jock now, and I was playing uh, the really tough sport of kickball, and and I had to sacrifice my body for the the win for my team. Um, and yeah, I have no idea. I just like caught a ball at one point and I looked at my hand and my pinky was like this. And I was like, oh, it's not supposed to be like that, right? Oh my God. The best part about that is I told my captain and I was like, hey, so like my finger's pretty messed up. And I was like literally on fire that, not literally on fire. I was on fire that day. And he was like, oh, like, don't let the other team know that you're injured. And I was like, okay, but also... Like I'm injured, and he was like, "Yeah, but don't let them know." And I was like, "Yes, I, I understand, but I'm gonna sit out because I'm injured." He's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, take care of yourself." Is what I meant. <laughs> oh my gosh, how are well, you feeling today? I'm good. I I am babysitting my cousins, and I their parents are in New Zealand, so like it's morning, afternoon, night. Yeah, and. I thought I knew what tired was. I don't. And I'm like, this is great because I know that I shouldn't have kids right now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's a teaching lesson, right? How about you? <laughs> uh, I had COVID last week for the first time. Yeah, which is why I, I thought I was untouchable. And then I got a little sloppy and was not as safe as I should have been when I was traveling. And so I got COVID and then the symptoms were not bad. I mean, they were bad, but it was only for like a couple of days. And then it started to get a lot better. And so I had taken like two weeks off for physical and mental health stuff. And then I jumped back in and I am starting to feel a little sick again, but I think I just like maybe pushed myself a little bit too hard. So today I'm actually feeling a little bit sick. Uh, but I was like, I will <laughs> burn the city to the ground if I have to like ask to reschedule this one more time. So no. I was like, put on your makeup, the show <laughs> must go on. I was oh doing my, my like Margot, Margot, Margot Roby moment in the, <laughs> in the mirror before I came in. I'm so mad at you. No, no, I'm okay. It's just, it's a little bit of like a... I just feel like a very nauseous, but I don't have much to do today, so I'm gonna rest afterwards. You've been waiting so patiently. You've been so flexible and so kind. And, and I can given... continue being flexible and kind. Yeah, like, I can touch my toes. <laughs> I was like looking at the text and it was like, oh, sorry, can't. Sorry, I have to cancel. I have to cancel. I have to cancel. And I'm like, bro, dude, just show up. So if it, if I get sick halfway through this and we're like, we have to we're scrap done. it. That's, yeah, we're done. But I'm fine. I'm okay. Okay. And if at any point you're like, dude, I really need a break we're done we have plenty of time i love you for being here but you really know I just feel so, like I, every time you post i'm always like oh, i gotta do it i gotta do it i gotta do it i gotta do it and i want to do it too so it's not like it's a burden or it's not like it's a forced obligation or anything like that I, i'm excited to be in the space with you but i like literally have felt fine until today and it was like this is a self-fulfilling prophecy at this point like i'm just I'm always saying like, oh, I got to make time for this. And the one day I actually make time for it, my body is like, Bleh. yeah, it's like, Bleh. you know, <laughs> we don't actually want to do <laughs> I don't even know what we're going to talk about. I, I'm just so happy. Everything's changed since the last time we spoke anyway. Yeah. Yeah. A lot has changed. And I've seen that even uh, having some really awesome people on the podcast with you. It's amazing. How, how are you feeling about everything? Good. I invested in like a marketing person because I've definitely seen an increase, but I want to like take it to the next level now. Yeah. And I don't seem to have a problem getting guests, though I owe two of them to you. Three of them now? Three guests? Yeah. Oh, did, you get a, yeah. did you work with Olivia yet? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So sweet. So sweet. What about CJ Matthews? Have you met him yet? No. Okay. Okay. No. I'm releasing my CJ Matthews video this week. So as soon as I release it, you'll see. But he's wonderful. He does grief activism. He's a 15 year old. And he, I also just found out his little brother, who's like seven, is also doing service work and stuff like that. So they got the whole little family. It's he's wonderful. 
I can't be- like look at all these young adults. I know that's what I said. So when I when I I knew about Jaquille, I don't know how, but I, I I just I've known about him for years, like since he was like a young boy doing his work, and I knew about Marty Copney, uh, Little Miss Flint, um, and those were the two that I would like often use in class and stuff like that. But Jaquille like shared some of the people in his kind of organization. And then I found out that he was doing these events and that it was like, I think I want to say YBC and I, I hope I'm not messing that up, but it was, it was like a group of young people who were all like change makers in their own different arenas and stuff like that. So I just started reaching out to them and, and then they would like send me more people. They would share my story. And then suddenly more of these kids would start following. And I'm like, yo, why are these kids not getting like more attention? You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. No recognition. I mean, like, that's not true. Okay, they have recognition, but yes, not as definitely. much as they should. And not, yeah, yeah, not outside of like their cities where they live. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing because in so many ways they are just truly community-based advocates. But I think that the importance of and and why like our projects similarly are important is to show other kids that they don't have to wait you know what I mean that's the whole Jaquille's thing is like you don't have to wait to be great but it's like it's important you can say those things and people can hear them and that's one thing but if they can see it right and you can like see these kids talk about it and when I've been interviewing and, and talking to these kids I've been thinking about a lot and, and kind of asking them more about their process versus like here's your accomplishments because then sometimes it becomes this kind of like look at these amazing wonderful kids who just suddenly woke up and decided to like start this amazing program and it's like that I think that that mentality can still feel really inaccessible to kids where it's like well I don't feel like I have that potential in me and so why would I be able to pull off this huge thing and and in reality it takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of like failing and trying and and gathering support and building yourself up and stuff like that. And so I think it's been really interesting uh, to be able to highlight that part of their kind of journey. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially because, I mean, for me, at least when I was younger, I had ideas and I was just like, mm -hmm. what am I, no one's going to go with me on them. And I don't have mm -hmm. enough self-confidence to like put myself out there. And what if I fail? And like, especially mm -hmm. pinpointing the fact that, okay, yes, they've accomplished this, this, and this. But they they failed too along the way. Mm -hmm. They've had to. No one just yeah. succeeds. You have to yeah. go through the different obstacles, and it's and they all just want it. Some of them seem to like be very happy with what they're doing, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. a lot of them are like, "No, I want to push the boundaries. I wanna mm -hmm. I want to go further. I want to go yeah. across all the states. I want to go out of the country. Like all these mm -hmm. amazing things." And I'm like, "Oh, thank goodness for you guys. Thank goodness." <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And you know, like on a personal note too, um, I've in this past year I've been trying to figure out how to make on like youth empowerment content. So not content for kids that is cheap, kind of like just quick, entertaining, like and whatever. If that's what you do and kids like it, fine. I'm not knocking that, but that's not what I wanted to do. But then I also didn't want to make content that is like just making like exploiting vulnerability in kids because I know that a lot of the work I do is emotional stuff but the reason I stopped sharing so much of my coaching and the teaching stuff is because like the kids I work with didn't sign up to do those things they didn't sign up to become content and so there's been moments where the kids are open and we like you know we want to share it and they understand the importance of what they're saying and it's cool to share but I'm trying to figure out you know like how do I make content that really like empowers kids and also shows adults that kids need to be taken seriously because so much of what we see around kids is just like you know it's cute or poking fun or we have this kind of like weird mentality around even like when we even when we are talking to some of these kids it's like they don't take them that as seriously as they should they don't take what they have to say it's very like like fluff pieces when in reality these are future and current leaders and and like change makers and community advocates. And one of the coolest things for me has been like I I grew up in Virginia, and so when I started working with kids, I worked in Fairfax, Northern Virginia, and I'm very grateful for the experiences I had, and I loved the kids that I worked with. But I didn't. There were not a lot of black kids. There was not a large black community in Fairfax, Northern Virginia. 
And so that was something that I wanted to connect to is like, cause I'm black and it's like, and I want to be able to, to show them that I'm out here representing and that like, that, you know, you look like me, we are the same, we are, you know, of the same people. And the, when I started working with Jaquille, it was like all these black young kids who were doing these amazing things. And I'm like, bro, like I, I have like a list of kids. I, I still haven't made my videos for but I just was seeing this trend and being like, wow, this is amazing. These like young black people, these young black kids are out here, like against the odds, pushing and, 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 and really lifting up important work in all these different arenas. And it's just amazing to be able to be a part of that. I, I want to do this work for all kids, you yeah. know, but I think it's also representation is important. When I was a kid, I didn't have anyone that I looked up to that I said looked like me or, you know, even being queer, right? It's like, who was out here that I was like, oh, I see myself in this person. It was, it was very rare. And so to have this opportunity to not only be that, but then to share those other unique voices and these stories and these perspectives has been really awesome. Yeah. And I think that it's so important, as you said, the representation for young children to see other children doing it of all different ethnicities and races mm -hmm, and just mm -hmm. showcasing like it doesn't matter where you come from like all these mm -hmm. children that these young adults i should say that we're talking mm -hmm. about they're doing this because they want to no one is forcing mm -hmm. them into this they see something that needs to be fixed mm -hmm. and they're like i can do this somehow and i'm going to figure out the resources and figure out what i need and that's so commendable mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because i don't talk to so many parents and i'm because I was always, you know, like worried. It's like, you think about entertainment industry and it's like, did these kids really sign up <laughs> to do this? You know, like, did they really, or were they kind of pushed to do it? And so many of the parents I've talked to are just like, I'm just here to help. Like, that's them. Like, this is their thing. And I just kind of like keep them safe and help provide resources and help kind of like create this establishment for them. But every kid that I've worked with, it's they it's always been their thing it's something that happened to them and with a little bit of support from their family members they were able to get it off the ground but now their families are, are more of like the just support crew for this larger vision and and these kids who are doing this amazing stuff so it, it gives me a lot of hope I think um it's it sounds kind of like what's the word it sounds kind of corny to say it but it's like the media only shows the bad but it's real like it's the truth like the media shows a lot of just negativity and I get sucked into it a lot of times because I am, a, I'm very much pessimistic. And I think people don't think that about me, but I do the work I do because I hyper-focus on the negative. I'm like, I have to see good. And that's why I was like, when I, when I met Jaquiel and started talking to him and seeing his community and growing, I, I just went down this rabbit hole of being like, oh my God, this kid and what, what is this kid doing? And what is this kid doing? And it's just amazing because without these organizations and these events that these few kids have started, we wouldn't have even seen all these other kids as much as we should have, you know? No, not at all. And it's, it's interesting because they, they all, as you said, like they all, the parents aren't involved, like they're involved, but everyone that I've talked to is like, oh no, this is just my child. Like this is mm -hmm. what they've been doing. And even for those children who don't have the ideas, if you hear another young adult who has an organization and it means mm -hmm. something to you, reach out and ask to help. Like it doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. if you're not the the person that's creating the idea, there's still room for you somewhere, right? Like mm -hmm. that's the mm -hmm. other important part of showcasing these young adults and these organizations is, okay, let's help other young adults mm -hmm. now join those and really just reshape the world. Because as you said, the news, I can't, I can't watch I the news because it's so sad. It's so depressing. But then I don't know, maybe instead of showing us all the bad things, maybe showcase like some of these organizations and these uh -huh. people that are doing incredible work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think when I started working with kids too, my work, my world was so dark. Like, I had friends and I, I was good at academics. Like as I got good grades and I was like kind of doing the right things, but my internal world, world was so dark and I was so depressed and I was struggling so much with things like substance abuse and 
um, you know, like self harm. And I, I just, there was no good. And I couldn't, even when I looked at my friends, I still didn't feel good. It was like, you know, this is, they're just kind of like a lifeline. They're like the reason I'm here at least. But then I started working with kids and I started like, I, I don't know if I've really talked about this that much, but I started working with kids in an acting company and which is funny because I don't like acting, but this lady was like, oh, you should work with kids. And I like laughed at her. I was like, why would you say that? to <laughs> Like, why would you say that to me? I had no idea. Like I had no like notion in my head that I would work with kids. And then she brought me into the room uh, to watch a class being taught. And then the teacher like invited me to play with the kids and they were like kindergartners and first graders. And it was just like, oh, this is like light. Like, this is like good. And even when they were being wild and out of control, right? Uh, it was like, it just felt good. It just felt nice. And I think that for me, Obviously, the skills that I teach kids are a big part of my own kind of journey and my own kind of rebuilding a relationship with myself and learning how to take care of myself. But I, I stand by the fact that kids are like what saved me, you know, and, and so when I lift kids up and I'm speaking good to them and I'm, and I'm talking about the impact that they're having on me and the impact that they're having on other people, I truly mean it because without them it felt so dark and and they are really the light in the world and we need to nourish and, and nurture that light and take care of them so they can go and continue that as they get older and not become um i don't know i i don't want to say like because there are adults who are doing amazing things too right like, so i'm not saying like adults are bad and the kids are good but i don't know just like continuing to shine and continuing to shine um is important. And I, and I try to teach kids, you know, like to recognize themselves and to see themselves in positive ways, because like, that's the first step to then going out and seeing the positive in other people or seeing positive in opportunities and seeing the good that can be done, right? Because they've already practiced that and built that with themselves. They have safety within themselves that they can then go out there and say, well, I want to contribute and I want to help and I want to offer but even some of these kids I've been talking to recently who have been doing these amazing things, like there's been a couple of kids where I'm like giving them positive feedback and they're like, oh, ugh, like, I don't like to think about myself. And I'm like, oh, like, can you do work with me? It's <laughs> like, I hope you're taking care of yourself. I hope you realize how important like that aspect is. But, you know, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I, well, I think that that's, I mean, I think we've spoken spoken about this too is like we're the same way like if someone gives me a compliment I'm like oh don't do that and yet here I am like well that's what I tried to instill in the when I was a pre-k teacher it was like okay children like be confident yes mm -hmm. if I compliment you like take it in and soak it up and like there are going to be obstacles and you're going to you know hit the floor sometimes but then you remember these other things that are so good and yet, like, if you were to come to me, I'd be like, uh, no. Well, I think we've lived in it longer. I, and I think that that, because I, I just did my first, like, adult learner series, and we were talking about obstacles around this stuff. And it's, when I talk with kids, and they're like, you know, I, it's been a really rough couple of years. I'm 13, and I don't like myself, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dang, two years, huh? That's, yeah. That is a long time for you. And I'm like, but if you live in that for 20 years? If you live in that for 10 years, do you know how hard it is to break that? So it's like, everyone has these things. But if we, I mean, and that's where it really came from for me was like, that's where I, that's where my drive to find skills and tools to teach kids how to take care of themselves came from was like, so much energy gets spent in trying to undo the harm that was done to us by ourselves, by society, by people in our lives. Um, who didn't know better or did, right? Systems, right? Oppression, all these things that have harmed us, either trying to undo that or trying to like keep protecting ourselves, kind of building that shell of our beliefs around us that no one can touch and, and that kind of fear-based living that a lot of adults, I think, struggle with. Um, if we can teach these skills to them earlier, it's not going to stop bad things from happening to kids. And that, and that is, I'm always really like honest about that because first of all, that's the nature of the world is bad things happen. And also when, when some bad things happen to kids, it's part of their struggle. Like that's, 
how they grow. Like that's how they like learn what they're capable of or learn how they need to grow. And so my skills are not to, so for kids to be a hundred percent happy all the time, it's for them to be able to go out into the world and to seek and, and, and promote positive experiences and also be able to take care of themselves and grow and learn from the negative experiences. But it's like, I was just telling a mom this the other day. It's like, I'm like a camping gear station before they go on the hike. Like I'm like one of those, <laughs> the little stations, they stop off and they get their equipment and then they go on the 26 mile hike, right? I'm not going with them. I don't know how that hike is going to be, but I know that I can give them the tools that they need, or they can pick the tools that really resonate with them to take on their journey. And that, and that is what I think youth empowerment, the role of me in youth empowerment should be is to, is to offer kids tools to take care of themselves as they're learning and they're growing. So they don't burn themselves down to the ground or disconnect from themselves completely because they feel lost or they feel like they're suffering and things like that. Yeah, I I mean, it's so important. And I recently someone asked me to be on their podcast. And we had like a little chat beforehand on zoom. And she looked really young. And I was like, how, how old are you? And she's 16. She lives in India. And she was a, a copywriter for three years. Okay, 16 years old copywriter for I think maybe two years. And she was like, I was burnt out, I had to leave. And I was like, you, you, I, I, I like don't even have words because I was like, <laughs> here I am living in the United States of America, like, and, but the same thing, like, it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you have the most supportive parents or not. Like, we all have these things that come up in life and they're not easy and they impact us in different ways, some negative, some positive. But we need to learn how to take care of ourselves in all these situations, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And that way, when we do come across things that are negative, we have the tools to work through it and not let it bring us down the wrong path, which yeah, is very I mean, to go down. It, because there's not a lot of support around it. I, I, I was just telling, I think I was talking to my brother about this, but it's like sometimes I'll talk to people about healing work and I'll talk to them about their kind of where they're at on their journey and stuff like adults and and they can be sometimes judgmental of other adults who maybe aren't on the path or like don't get it in their eyes. And it, and I was saying, I was like, it's not like we all had this class, like this subject that we all skipped, right? Like, it's not like we were like, how to take care of myself. No, I'm going to skip, right? Like we didn't have that class. And so I think sometimes people don't realize that people are going to take care of themselves however they feel feel like they can and and sometimes unfortunately the ways that we do it are really negative and it harms ourselves or it harms other people and and that's why I I go to kids before those kind of like lived in patterns become rigid and become solid and become like this is who I am and I can't change or is very much like you can grow into whoever you want to grow into and and think about who is it that you want to be? So when I ask kids, like, you know, uh, one of the most common questions we ask kids are, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm like, what kind of person do you want to be? That's my question. How do you want to feel as an adult? Like, what are things that you want to experience as a, as an adult? Those are the questions I kind of go to because that I think meets them where they're at. Asking an 11 year old what they want to do for their job. I'm like 33 and I barely, I still don't know. I'm like chugging along. But if I can ask myself what kind of person I want to be, I want to be somebody that helps. I want to be somebody that is trying and trying to do good. I want to be somebody that learns from mistakes. I want to be somebody that can offer people kindness and love. I want to be somebody that can support the people in my life, support their growth, right? I want to be somebody that can experience joy and love. I want to be someone that won't be defeated by the negativity, right? But I've, I've, I can answer those questions because I've spent so much time with myself around these things. And, and if, if I can do that, if I can create spaces or opportunities or programs or curriculum or whatever it is that gives kids a chance to think about, then, then, I'm, then I'm happy, you know, that, then I'm good. Then I can sleep for a week, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's also like, Asking these young adults and young children, like, what you want to be when you grow up as a, like, if you focus on what you're asking, who do you want to be? What do you want people to think of you as? Like, 
Then when it comes to looking for jobs, Mm -hmm. it can be like, oh, this does not meet that criteria. If I Mm -hmm. take this job, then I'm going to possibly lose this, this, and this off of my who do I want to be. So Mm -hmm. is the job worth it or not? And maybe there's a different job out there that has something similar to whatever you thought about that does meet all this criteria. Yeah. And and I yeah. think we all, like our generation, a lot of us got stuck in jobs that we don't love and that mm-hmm. we don't let it meet the criteria of who we want to be as people. And we're not the happiest generation. <laughs> and mm. if we can change that for these younger children who are going to be leading the world, mm-hmm. how amazing could that be? You know, I think too, like, I... <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about this stuff. Uh, I think, like, maybe your job isn't this profound thing, right? Maybe your job isn't your main source of joy in the world, and that that's okay, right? That people can people can earn a living and be satisfied because they're treated well, because they're respected, because they're valued, because they get to use their strengths in these jobs, right? Like, I I don't think sometimes I think when we push we push this kind of stuff. It's like, everyone has to go out there and be this big leader or be this big change baker. But in reality, it's like, if you want to be happy, if you say like, I want to feel respected, I want to feel secure in my job, right? That job could be a lot of things, right? It doesn't have to be this grand purpose kind of thing. I know plenty of adults right now who, when, you know, their job is off, it's like, I I have a job that I appreciate because it pays the bills. And I have a job because it gives me a living and it's secure and it's safe. And I feel respected and valued in it. And it doesn't have to be this big, like, you know, trying to find what your purpose is through work, because your purpose may be the community that you're in outside of it. A purpose may be a passion that you have outside of it. It could be a hobby that you do for the sake of you right? Something that brings you joy, right? And I I just found something recently that I started doing and I was like, oh, cool. This is something that is just for me. Like, I don't, I don't have to like save anyone. I don't have to do anything positive. I am like kayaking. That's what I like doing. And, and just being like, I can't wait to go kayak and just experiencing like that's a part of my life now. That's an area where I feel joy. I get to be in nature. I get to be around water. I'm getting physical exercise. Like that is a part of my life that I lift up. And I and that came from trying to find things to fill that happiness because Dono friend and doing this work, I, I'm incredibly grateful for all the opportunities. I'm so grateful for the support. I'm so grateful for the love. I am more than grateful for all the amazing kids that I've gotten to work with and that I've gotten to meet. But also it started to consume me. It started to be like Don O'Friend is Donovan and there is no space for Donovan in the world where I have to be Don O'Friend 100% of the time. And so I had to check myself and be like, bro, like it doesn't matter that I'm doing all this positive work or I'm trying to have an impact in this world. If I, sh- if I shut off at the end of the night and I feel empty, and I'm unhappy, and I don't have anything in my life where it's like, this is for me, then I'm not doing what I'm telling kids to do, right? Like, I'm out, the work is positive, great. What do I get? What do I have in my life, right? I want to have friends, I want to have a partner, I want to have a family, I want to go on experiences and trips, and I want to kayak so much, and I want to work with elephants. But it's like, I've had to like, really sit with myself and remember the same thing I'm telling these young people, right? That like these two things are separate. I can hold space for both these things. I can hold space for the fact that the work is important, that it is a calling, that I am so lucky to have found it. And I'm so grateful for all the support. And also that I have to make room for Donovan. I have to make room for, you know, little Donnie to like live his life and not feel like I have to play this role to be uh, um, to, to be happy. Like if I decided to walk away from Dono friend tomorrow, I can do that. Yeah. And people might be mad and sorry, I'm kayaking. I'm not going to do it because I love this work, <laughs> right? But it's my choice. And I think that that's, that's something I try to really hard to instill in kids is it's your life and it's your choice that you make. And you get to dec- decide what's best for you and what works for you and what doesn't. As long as you're not harming yourself, as long as you're not harming other people, right? Yeah. Do your thing. Yeah. And and also not feeling guilty. Like, I love when you post on your story and you're like, I need time. 
I'm not going to be on on Twitch tonight or because you know what? it shows, but it shows that you're taking care of yourself. And it's a very clear reminder for other people like, OK, he didn't leave us high and dry. He's telling us he needs time. Good. Take that time. And if people are mad, so what? People are going to be mad. But like, it's so important that we're able to recognize, OK, I, I know I committed to this thing, like even for the podcast today, Donovan, I, know <laughs> I committed to this thing, but <laughs> if I need time, I can. And even there was one time that I was struggling to get a ep- uh, podcast episode out or a blog out or something. And I wrote on my thing, on my story, like, sorry, something came up, like, super sorry about not being able to post it tomorrow. It'll be out whatever date I've said. And I think like that was the most liked story that I ever posted because people recognize, oh, this person is taking care of themselves. I understand that I can do it. And like removing the guilt, which I hope we can start instilling in these younger kids is like, Mm -hmm. if you need time, take that time. It's okay. You're better off taking that time to heal yourself and come back than overdoing it. I mean, it's vital. You know what I mean? It's it's so important. And and especially in this world that is demanding all the time, you know, and, and, and understanding that you're on your own timeline, you're on your own timeline. And, and that's, a, that's been a tough pill for me to swallow. The Today Show happened a year and a half ago. And it feels like it was yesterday. And it also feels like it's been 10 years since it happened. And sometimes what I, I'll start thinking like, well, why haven't I done this? Or why didn't I go this way? And I even got feedback from like, you know, agencies and people who I was working with where it's like, you're not taking advantage of these opportunities. And I had a person in the industry literally tell me that this, he's like, this is popular right now, but you will be forgotten by this time next year, right? Unless you take these other opportunities that don't align with what you want to do. And so for me, like, even posting, I'm taking a break and stuff like that. I feel awful doing it, but that higher part of me that is like trying to take care of myself is like, you just got to do it. You you have to, like, you have to put, you have to put it out there because I am on my own schedule. I'm on my own timeline. There is no one that is like actively being like, where is Donovan at? Where is his content? Like nobody is worried about that. And I think that we often feel that pressure. And even, even like on a kind of higher level, like kids feeling that way with their learning, like you have to fit this timeline of your learning, your learning has to match what we think you should be. And so people are always comparing themselves to other people. But in reality, in growth and learning, what I want to teach kids is compare yourself to where you were before. Like comparing yourself to other people does not do anything. It doesn't do anything except for breed shame and breed guilt and breed insecurity or jealousy. And and like there's, and sometimes for some people it builds drive. And I understand that looking at competition, I get that that's a thing, but for a lot of people, that's not the purpose that that serves, right? It's not the purpose that it serves and it makes people feel less than. I think one of my most liked videos on TikTok was me having a conversation with the kids because we were doing a Kahoot and someone what and I understand why Kahoot does this but it just in this moment I was like oh this could be like really problematic because it will say like 32 people got it right and one person got it wrong and so they did that and I was like okay we're gonna move on but then the group was like vocalizing and they're like who messed that up like this is so easy like how could you have messed that up and we had been working on this stuff for like six months at this point. And so I could understand why the kid said that. But then I thought immediately about that kid in the room who got it wrong, who is like sitting there thinking like something's wrong. Like, why why did I mess this up? And the, the fact is, is because they haven't gotten it yet. They haven't grasped it yet. And that's okay. That's okay. But it was just this like, and and the kids immediately, like when I called it out, the kids were like, they're still learning. Like that's, I, I love that video because you can hear the kids be like, yeah, you know what? They're learning, right? We, we shouldn't have done that. Like you're at where you're at. That's fine. Who knows if that kid was even just like playing around, like maybe somebody picked it on accident or whatever, but just, you know, like having, having that experience, I think really showed me and the kids that people are just at different places and that's academically and also personal growth and just like who you are as a person in general i i look at my friends right now and i think 
I often feel like I'm behind because almost all of my close friends are married. Like my kid, my friends are spitting out like two or three babies at this point, right? Like I had to go to, I was like in five weddings in one year and I was like, mm -hmm, this is fine. <laughs> this is fine and starting to stress. And I remember I told my best friend about it. I was like, man, I just feel like I really messed up. Like I should be, there's no reason I don't have a partner. Like I, sh I, I I'm not where y'all are at. And then he was like, oh yeah, cool. You're like literally about to have a TV show. So he's like, we're married and you're like about to have a TV show. I, said, I don't understand how these two things, like how you don't recognize that you're at where you need to be at. Like you've done a lot of amazing things, just like we've done amazing things. They're just different and that's okay. But I think we just, we forget that a lot. And, and that's why, you know, full circle, like, that's why when we, when I talk about this stuff with kids, with these kids who have done amazing things, I try to humanize them. So they're not these like superheroes, right? But they're kids who have just done something that is great, right? They're not like these, in, uh, you know, these perfect beings who were born into the world being like, I will save humanity, right? They're a person who found something that they care about. And that they want to 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 do good, and that anyone can do that, right? Mm -hmm. No matter how old you are, you can start that process for yourself, and it and it's and it's going to be your growth, and it's going to be your journey, and it's going and and the only way to keep growing is to just keep going. Ew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I say that to myself all the time, though. Keep going, keep growing. I say it all the time. It's a Seriously. good thing. You like it tattoos? You could get it tattooed somewhere. So I know, I know. Oh my God, Ugh. next to my my kids, my tattoos, <laughs> my kids. That's what I should do. But it's so true. I was just like, I got goosebumps when you told that story because I used to get terrified when we had to do like anything where you had to raise your hand in the class for this answer, or or even like we had those remote answers or whatever. And I would always be like, you better get it right. You better get it right. Mm -hmm. And then if I didn't, I was like, oh my God, I am the dumbest person in this class. I mm -hmm. am a complete idiot compared to ever then. Mm -hmm. When that wasn't true. Mm -hmm. And it's still even to this day, like kids are so stressed at such a young age mm -hmm. to get everything done and be at the top of their class when you know what? We all learn differently. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I, when I taught preschool, I told the parents, I was like, do not compare your children to the other children. Like, I'm not giving your kids tests or anything. And when we have parent-teacher conference, I'm talking about just your child because that's what matters, just how your child is learning. I'm going to share what helps them learn, what doesn't help them learn. And you know what? If they're not at the same page as Tommy, I don't care. They'll yeah. they'll get there. Yeah. They'll get there at their own time. And it's, yeah, Ugh. Well, and when we and when we don't like, because I work with a lot of middle schoolers, and and I see something. I don't know why I didn't notice it until more recently. I think since I started coaching kids individually, but just a lot of shame, like a lot of shame for asking for help and asking for support. And that's something else that happens. Is like I understand that there are development like milestones, and I understand that there are things that we look at to say like, is this person developing in the way that they should? And that's reasonable. But I think that often when the comparison stuff comes into it, right, then then it makes that shame kind of thing of like, what's wrong with me or what's wrong with my kid versus like, okay, well, here's an area that my kid needs extra support in. Right. As simple as that. As that that's all it is. A, a C is either like my kid needs support with the subject or needs support with motivation. Right. It's one of the two. So either one is support. Right. But one is like one is, you know, OK. And the other one is not. But there's reasons that kids are not engaged with their education or there's reasons that kids are struggling with their education. And and supporting both of them is, is I think, the goal or, or should be the goal of educating and, and helping kids grow. Right. Is like helping them build motivation, helping them understand themselves, helping them know that it's okay to ask for support and it's okay to ask for help you know and i mean asking for help is something that is such an important skill that they need to know because when you get to whatever job you're doing or mm -hmm. whatever you do in life you need to be comfortable 
asking for support because mm -hmm. you will need it. It's inevitable that whatever it is, you're going to need support at one point or another, and you need to be okay asking for it because mm -hmm. there's no shame. And who knows, maybe the person that you ask for support, they too need support in that same thing. Like, I think that right. it's so, e like, we're so egotistical and not in a mm -hmm. negative way. It's just the way that we are built as humans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But a lot of students, including myself, I was like, I'm the only one in this whole classroom. Mm -hmm. that and that made me feel really isolated. When I'm sure there were a few other kids who needed the same help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's the way that the education system builds extrinsic validation through grades, right? Because grades are meant to be an indicator of where you're at. And again, whether it's with understanding the subject or motivation or, you know, like that's what it's supposed to show. It's like, okay, like I'm either engaged or I'm understanding, or maybe I'm, I need a little bit more support, or maybe I'm really disconnected from my engagement or education. That's what it should be. But it's like, even my high flyer kids, it would be so rare to have a kid be like, I'm working so hard because I want to learn and grow it was like I have to get good grades right and that because that's the way the system is built up and so it's tough to tell kids that grades don't matter right because they do in the systems that we're in and that's the truth right and so I try to tell them what I tried to establish was that my care for them is not dependent on their grades and so in my space your grades are just an indicator of where you're at right? It's not an indicator of the love that you deserve. It's not an indicator of how you're valued in this space. It's not an indicator of your potential. It is just where you're at right now with this, right? And, and, and establishing care outside of those things, right? Then allows kids to look at that and say, okay, well, it's not that I'm hated. It's not that I'm dumb. It's not that I'm awful. It's just that I need some support. And whether, again, I, this is so important because I talk to parents about this a lot, whether it's I need support around the subject, I need support around motivation. It's one of the two. <laughs> I need support around engagement and motivation, or I need support around the subject. That's the two. Someone who has all Fs is either completely lost in their education or just does not give a shit. Excuse my language. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, so, it's true i like that you're narrowing it down to those two things though i don't know what else it could be i can't think of anything else everything falls within these two things right yeah. no but everything it's true. falls within whether you don't understand a subject because it's tough whether you have um uh different learning needs right whether you process things differently that's all around student support for academics right or whether you hate your school whether you don't see anything that feels relevant to you in your education, right? Whether you hate your teachers, whether you are feeling lonely and depressed, right? That goes into the motivation aspect of it. And they all need support. But then we we make kids feel bad for either or, right? You have kids who have um, IEPs being treated like something's wrong with them. When in reality, what we've done is identified that they need extra support but they're treated like burdens sometimes. And in reality, and like that, the whole point of identifying the fact that they need extra support is so that they can, they can show up in their learning without the shame, without the guilt, without the comparison, right? To say, oh, cool. This is just how my brain works. Right. This is, so a lot of people like will tell me to journal and I would try to journal. And I know it's important because we know it's, we hear it right? Everybody knows it's important, just like we all know it's important to breathe, right? We all know it's important to sit and meditate, right? I get it. But I would often beat myself up and be like, God, you can never stick to it. What's wrong with me? Like, I hate journaling, right? And then my friend just randomly was like, oh, well, I feel like you're more of a person that verbally processes things. And I was like, what? That's a what thing? does that mean? Me? What does that mean? <laughs> and they're like, well, like, can you reflect out loud? And I was like, oh my God, yeah. I do that all for the time. Hours. Yeah, I could do that for <laughs> hours. And they were like, well, maybe instead of journaling, just like record yourself. And I was like, okay. So I went home that night and I'm like, doing testing. So here are three things I'm thinking about myself right now. And then I just went into like a two hour, just like reflection process. And then in that, that simple shift, that simple, someone giving me permission to say that, 
just because it doesn't work for you the way that it works for other people, it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It just means that you need to seek a new strategy, that you need to find a different way that works for you. And it blew my mind. I had a girl in my class, the same thing happened. We were taking a test and it was like, everybody needs to be quiet. And she she just kept like mumbling. And I, and I kept being like, hey, like, hey, like, shh you know, you're talking. And she's like, sorry, sorry. And I'm like, okay, okay. And she's like, oh, I'm guessing. And I mean, you could hear it. And everybody's looking at her. And I was like, hey. So I like pulled her aside. And I was like, are you okay? I, I thought she was like, maybe doing some positive self-talk or negative self-talk. I was like, what's going on? And she was like, I just need, I just need to say it out loud. I need to say it out loud. Like that, I just need to say these things out loud because I can't in my head. And I was like, cool, well, can I just like put you over here so you can do that? Because we had two sections in the room and she was like, yeah, and she did it. And then she was fine. She said it out loud and she was like, okay. And she went back to it and she was good. And and I thought that that was funny because in sixth grade, Miss Beckerdite, Uh-oh. Kimberly Beckerdite, or is it Kimberly? Meredith? Anyways, Miss Beckerdite, we had to remember the planets and I just, I'm really not, this is a fixed mindset, but I'm not good at memorizing things, right? Which is why I hate acting because I'm just trying to remember it and my brain gets all caught up. And my niece had a Booze Clues toy that sang the planets in order. And I knew that song because I love music. And I knew that song like the back of my hand. And the same thing happened where I was like, the sun's a hot star. And Mercury is hot too. And she was like, Donovan, she was like, stop talking. And I was like, okay. And then I started to get emotional and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, I just like asked her if I could go outside. And she, she went outside with me and she was like, what's up? And I was like, I just need to sing this song because that's the only way I can remember it. And she was like, okay, you can sing it three times and then you need to come back in there and, and write it down. So I'm doing it. The sun's a hot star. Mercury's hot too. Venus is the brightest planet. And Earth's home to me and you. Mars is the red one. And Jupiter is most wide. Saturn's got those ice rings. And Uranus spins on the side. Neptune's really windy. And Pluto's really small. Now we wanted to name the planets. And now we've named them all. Right? To this day, I still know that song. And I went in and I got a 100 on the on the little pop quiz. Right? But if, if that teacher hadn't given me a moment to access that other part, of how my brain worked, you would right? Have. I would have failed. No idea. I'm 33. This happened when I was 11 or 12, and I can still sing that song to this day because I learned it. I learned, and I think that it's just it's it's a sh- it's one of my goals. I think that I was going to say it's a shame, but I want to kind of put it more in a positive orientation way. One of my goals is to normalize growing and learning and and something that I think is really important to think about is if we hate a subject if we hate something doing something a lot of times we associate that it's that subject I hate math but in reality we hate how it makes us feel about ourselves if I sit down and I feel dumb I'm not going to want to do that thing anymore but if I sit down and feel challenged and have the ability to talk to myself and understand that I can get better and I can grow and I can use practices and strategies and ask for support, right? I'm not threatened by the subject anymore. But as an adult, I still struggle with that. If I have to write something, that feeling, this doesn't make sense. This is stupid. Why are you doing this? Why are you trying, right? But in reality, the only way I'm going to get better is if I keep writing, if I keep pushing forward. But I had to identify that it's not writing that I hate. It's how writing makes me feel that I hate. And I just put that often on writing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it's an interesting way to to approach your mindset too, because I didn't like history, right? That mm-hmm. subject, it was just one of those subjects that like memorizing all the things mm-hmm. and like, I hated it. I hated mm-hmm. it because it made me feel stupid. It made, it made me, me feel, feel like... bored. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't care about these white dudes. But it's true. It's true. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I can't memorize anything. And so I hated it. And at one point, my mom was like, you memorize a lot of song lyrics. Why don't you like put the history into a song? And I was like, I was like is that what Hamilton is? Because I still haven't I? seen it. Is that what Hamilton is? I assume. I haven't seen it. <laughs> cool. Okay. I've heard it. 
someone forced me to listen to it, but I have not seen it. But I think I that's the concept, right? It's it's I think history. It's right. <laughs> through music, through rap, right? I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is. Seriously. And and it's interesting because now that I'm doing Twitch, mm-hmm. um, a lot of people are against video games and a lot of people are up in arms about the violence and the, and the toxicity that exists within them. And and just like any tool, there's the opportunity to do good and the opportunity to do bad. And when I'm talking about self-talk, when I'm talking about growth mindset, when I'm talking about gratitude, I could teach it in a classroom, right? And do lesson plans and do little activities around it. And that may or may not work. Or I can find something that kids enjoy and transfer those same skills into that space. And so I go into that space, growth mindset is about practice and time and effort, video games, self-talk, right? When I make a mistake, when I fail, when I lose, how do I talk to myself? How do I treat myself, right? How does that, how does that impact my motivation? Yeah, I, I was playing, there's a game called um, Apex Legends and it's a first person shooter game and I hate it. And I hate it because it doesn't feel like I can get better at it. But I was watching the tapes. I was watching the tapes. I was watching the streams of me playing it. And you can just see my motivation and my energy and everything get drained. Within three matches, I'm like, I don't want to play video games anymore, right? Because of how I felt playing that game. And then how I was talking about myself. You're trash. Dude, you're so bad at this, like blah, blah, blah. And then my kids in the same space with me being like, you are new, You have to keep playing. The people who are beating you have been playing for 16 hours in a row up until now, right? Like these people have been up all night playing. Like some of these people have been playing for years. Some of these people have played the first one. Like, of course, you're going to be worse than them because you're new to it. And if you want to get better, you just have to keep losing and then learning from it. Because another one, another kid said, Mr. Donovan, it's not enough to just like keep trying You need to learn from why you're losing. So you're rushing in all the time and then you're getting like sniped right away. And he's like, so instead, like maybe hide or maybe like work with your team. And I'm listening to him and I'm like, this is what I want to teach kids. We're doing it organically and we're doing it with something that they're connected to. So then when they are trying to face another skill in their life that maybe they're not as engaged in or passionate or the self-talk is really difficult. They have this other thing that they can do skill transference. I know that this is the same concept that applies to learning and getting better at anything, right? Whether it is video games, whether it is an instrument, whether it is some sort of sport or a subject or liking yourself or having a relationship with yourself, all of these things are connected. I need to stop. I need to assess. I need to practice new strategies. I need to ask for support. I need to understand that I'm going to fail sometimes. That's a part of it. It's all the same thing. And for me, sorry, Florida, I would rather do it in a space where they care about the subject or they care about the the vehicle that it's being, like, what's the word I'm looking for? I th- the, That it's getting trans. Yeah, that's how like it's trans. I, I don't know so. the, the term, but I know what we're trying to get at, that the, the knowledge is being trans. It's not the right word. Transported. That's not the right word. Or like transmuted. I don't know. I don't even know what. Transmitted. Transmitted. We'll go with that. I get you though. I get you. (laughs) I could look it up. That's what I do. That's what I do all the time on my Twitch too is like, I'll say something and I'm like, I don't know if that's true. And they're like, is it? And I'm like, just look it up. Yeah. Just look it up. Like right now. Like I don't, I I said something. I don't know if it's true. I'm going to look it up. Yeah. And here, now I know. Like the other day. They asked me about Mandalorian, and I thought that that was a musical instrument. Um, the guitar, it's like a guitar type musical the instrument. <laughs> they were like, I don't think that's what it is, Mr. Donovan. And I was like, Well, let's look it up. And I was like, Oh, Mandalorian is something from Star Wars. <laughs> but today I learned that a mandolin is a musical instrument that was really popular in Italy. Look what I learned today. Instead of being like, I'm so stupid or pretending that I know the answers and then adamantly fighting people about it until I look like a fool, I immediately stopped myself and was like, you know what? We live in the world of information, the age of information. I'm going to look it up right now and learn. Yeah, I have to join one of these Twitches because I I love, love, love the idea of you taking something that a lot of parents 
don't love, right? We don't want our kids to be on video games all the time. But here, they're not only engaging in something that they love, they're with someone who is intelligent, responsible, and like an adult figure who's also reshaping their mindset. And for some kids, they might not even notice that that's happening. Yeah, and then, that's like the goal, right? Right? Like, and then they <laughs> use it somewhere else and then they're, they're like, where did I yeah. learn how to do that and say that? And then <laughs> reflecting, they're like, I was just mm-hmm. playing a video game. Like, mm-hmm. so yep. smart. So smart. Yep. One of my boys came back. I hadn't seen him since seventh grade because he left our middle school. And then I made my Twitch when I was in seventh grade with them while I was teaching them. But then I didn't have the equipment and stuff. So I only did like three streams and it was terrible. And I was like, well, never touching this again. And then I came back recently. And so he was like, oh my God, Mr. Donovan, like I haven't seen you in years. And I'm talking to him and his voice is all deeper. And I'm like, my baby. And I was messing up with something. And he's like, oh, Mr. Donovan, you remember what you taught me, right? Practice, time, and effort. That's how you get better. And I was like, wow. So then the kids were, they'll coach me, right? So I'm being negative and they're like, oh, positive self-talk or like, oh, use your growth mindset. And then to, to show gratitude, in that space for them helping me learn so not just like i'm grateful that you're here but thanks for teaching me this like this this has helped me get better and it's because you shared your knowledge with me that i got to like grow at this thing and then and to show kids that they're capable of supporting other people's growth and and teaching i'm gonna tell you this this is a little bit of tangent I think we should make all kids teach because I think that they would be more empathetic to teachers because these kids get so frustrated. My manager, Isaiah, gets so frustrated with me when he's trying to teach me something. And he's like, oh, it's, it's easy, two steps. And I'm like, Mm-mm, nope, I am immediately not listening anymore because you're yelling at me. And he's like, sorry, like, uh, okay, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to start with step one. And it's like teaching them to think about how frustrating it can be to teach something yeah. to someone that doesn't get it. And like how easy we can like kind of have these bad reactions to it. So the Twitch the Twitch thing is not large for me yet, but it's my favorite type of content. It's my favorite space that I'm doing the work with kids for sure is is playing video games with them. And a lot of times too, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, and also, like, it's fun, it's engaging, and everyone's learning. And these young adults and kids or whatever, whoever is joining, is also learning that it's okay to mess up. It's okay Mm -hmm. not to be great at things. It's okay to Mm -hmm. learn. It's okay to help each other. And it's okay to, like, keep trying. Yeah. It's okay if you're not great at Mm -hmm. this thing. Like, okay, let's work together. And as you said, it's, I definitely agree that all kids at some point should become teachers, like the teacher of the <laughs> group. Even if it's like, like even the how to's, right? Like, I don't know if they still do that, but like I had to write a million how to's for English class, like how to wash a dog or something. They should have a how to and have to teach the class how to do it because they are going to learn how frustrating it is and how to like... I'm- communicate all that do this i'm so sorry because i know that we're doing this but i have to like write this down because you know there's this option on twitch called just chatting and that is it's where you um you're just talking to your audience and obviously if you have like a small um audience that may be like four or five people in there and stuff like that but for the people who have larger audiences like it's just kind of like a little bit of a talk show but that would be so fun is to have the kids teach because I never did a how to and I've seen a video where it was like how to make a peanut peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Have you seen that one where the oh, teacher yeah. like asked the kids to do it? That would be so fun to do yeah. on just chatting is like ask the kids to teach me how to do a specific thing like step by step. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Cuz even Thank as simple you. as a peanut butter sandwich, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to say, "Okay, put the bread out." And you're going to put it on the toaster, you're going to put it out in the microwave shelf like they don't realize how clear they have That's to be. Fun. That's and like so when they say fun. spread the peanut butter, you spread it on your hand and they look at you like, oh, yeah. what are you do? What is wrong with you? <laughs> oh yeah. And it, but it's, and it's like, I think that empathy piece too, when kids can tell the teachers are frustrated and they take it out on themselves where it's like, they don't like me. Right. But just understanding that like, sometimes it's difficult 
And, and to think about the fact that there are 20 to 35 kids who are all learning differently at the same time from the same person, like that's wild to me. I'm sitting here like breaking down the process of teaching in my head. And I'm like, how do, how there, do teachers do it? There were <laughs> multiple so times cool. when I was teaching and my assistant and I would look at each other and it would be like halfway through the day or 10 minutes into the day. Whenever we would just look at each other and be like, who put us in charge? Like, we have these <laughs> children that I'm in charge of. I have to educate them. And like, oh. and I would look at them and one is doing this. Thing. And like, I was just like, what is teaching? I know. I've never really, I think it's because my, I'm, I'm starting to feel pretty sick again right now. Like, I'm, I can feel my brain getting a little bit fuzzy. Uh, but I was just like, I'm just laughing because I've never thought about that before, like until I had that experience. I think that would be really funny. Um, I had something. Yeah, I can, I can tell. Well, well, it. here's what we can do. We can end because it's, it's been an hour, so we can end. Woo! And Thank you, right, friend. go relax and <laughs> <take it. laughs> I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.